Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to talk about the female pelvis, its role in giving birth, as well as how we determine its diameter and size, and also the different types of shape that we can observe and how that influences birth. The pelvis comprises the lower part of the abdomen and it is the part that the baby has to pass through in the process of being born. Usually the diameter of the pelvis has just enough space for the baby to pass through. But sometimes the proportions of the baby's head or shoulders and the mother's anatomy do not fit. There are a few measurements that can be done directly or indirectly to estimate the size of the pelvis and also the size of the baby. In general, the three measurements we take to obtain the size of the pelvis is the anteroposterior diameter, the transverse diameter and the right and left oblique diameter. These measurements are taken at different levels of the pelvis, which are the pelvic rim, the cavity and the outlet. The pelvic rim is the border to the pelvic inlet and is comprised or formed by a line passing through the prominence of the sacrum, the arcuate line and the pectinal line and the upper margin of the pubic symphysis. The anteroposterior diameter for the pelvic rim is measured between the upper inner edge of the symphysis pubis and the sacral promontory and measures usually 11 cm. This is the only measure we can directly measure clinically with the use of a hand or an instrument. The oblique diameters are measured between the sacroiliac joint and the iliopectineal eminence. It usually measures 12 cm. The transverse diameter is measured between the widest points of the iliopectineal lines and should measure 13 cm. For the pelvic cavity, the numbers of the diameters are easy to remember. It is round in shape, so all diameters are 12 cm. The anteroposterior diameter is measured from the inner border of the symphysis pubis to the curvature of the sacrum. For the oblique measures, we use the sacroiliac joint as one point and the pubic rami as the other one. The transverse measure is taken from the right to the left inner area of the ischium. The outlet is rectangular in shape. The anteroposterior measurement is between the lower border of the symphysis pubis and the sacrococcygeal joint and measures usually 13 cm. The right and left oblique is usually around 12 cm and is measured from the sacrospinous ligament to the foramen obturatorium. The transverse diameter is the distance between the ischial spines and is usually 11 cm. As you see in the table on the poster, if you remember how to write down the chart, it is very easy to memorize the centimeter measures. As mentioned earlier, we can only measure the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic rim directly. All other measurements are either calculated from this measurement or are measured in an X-ray image or MRI. A pelvimetry of this extent is however only done if the fetal size is abnormally large or if the proportion of the size of the mother and the size of the fetus seems to not allow a passing through the birth canal. However, the measurements are usually done during the first or second trimester, while due to the hormone relaxine in the end of pregnancy, the pelvis loosens up and the ligaments stretch to widen the pelvis a little bit more 
before birth. Now I want to talk about the types of pelvis that can be observed. That describes the shape of the cavity, which can be more round, oval, narrow or flat. As you can imagine, a wider, rounder and more spacious shape makes natural birth easier than a flatter, more oval shape. We generally differentiate four shapes of the pelvis. Around 50% of women have the so-called gynecoid shaped pelvis. It is round to cylindrical in shape with a wide pubic arch of 90 degree or more. Around 25% of white females and 50% of non-white females have the so-called anthropoid shaped pelvis. It is long in shape and rather narrow with an anteroposterior diameter, which is longer in the anteroposterior diameter than in the transverse diameter. The third shape is the android shape, which is found in approximately 30% of women. It is hard or triangular in shape with a narrow diameter and a narrow pubic arch. The last shape is the platypeloid shape, which is only found in around 3% of women. It is a flat and wide oval where the transverse diameter is wide, but the anteroposterior diameter is very short. The most favorable shape for vaginal delivery is the gynecoid shape, as it has a wide diameter in all planes. The anthropoid shape is usually not a contraindication for vaginal delivery. However, the baby is more likely to be born in an occiput posterior position. The android and platypeloid shapes of the pelvis are usually contraindications for vaginal delivery, and in women with this shape, a cesarean section is recommended. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.